Tuberculosis is a global health problem. It is one of the most important, preventable causes of death and morbidity in the world today. Mycobacterium tuberculosis, MTB, is a slow-growing intracellular organism which makes culturing the organism slow and unreliable. Latent TB infection occurs when people carry MTB bacilli in their body but the bacteria are controlled by the body's immune system and are still in small numbers. In this state, the MTB do not cause disease or any TB symptoms. Individuals with latent TB infection are not infectious. They would be negative to most TB tests, including culture and smear microscopy. Small nodules are occasionally seen on chest X-ray. Until recently, the only test capable of identifying LTBI has been the tuberculin skin test, TST. The most commonly used TST is the MAN2 test. This involves an intradermal injection of purified protein derivative, PPD, into the arm. PPD is a mixture of proteins derived from dead M tuberculosis cultures. An immune reaction occurs within 48 to 72 hours, at which time the induration is measured. This test requires two patient visits. In addition, the test requires up to 72 hours to get the result, and false positives can occur in BCG vaccinated subjects or following infection with environmental mycobacteria. The DNA of Mycobacterium tuberculosis has a region of difference called RD1 that is not found in BCG and most environmental mycobacteria. The RD1 area of MTB encodes for nine proteins, including ESAT6 and CFP10. These two proteins are used in the T-spot TB assay to challenge T-cells. If the T-cells recognize these proteins, they secrete interferon gamma. T-spot TB is a simplified variant of the enzyme-linked immunospot elispot assay technique. It enumerates individual affected T lymphocytes, activated by the presence of CFP10 and ESAT6 proteins from the RD1 region of MTB. Affected T cells are quite short-lived. Their continuing presence indicates the cellular immune response is currently encountering and fighting a pathogen somewhere in the body. Measuring the presence of effector T cells in a sample therefore diagnoses an ongoing infection. In contrast, the presence of memory T cells would only indicate that someone had been infected with the pathogen at some point in the past. Blood from the patient is centrifuged and the number of peripheral blood monuclear cells, PBMCs, is counted. The sample is diluted so that 250,000 PBMCs are added to each well. PBMCs are added to a pre-coated well that contains antibody to interferon gamma. Cells are incubated for 16 to 20 hours. In the presence of activated effector T cells, the TB-specific antigens ESAT6 and CFP10 stimulate the production of interferon gamma which binds to antibodies to interferon gamma on the base of the well. Wells are washed. And a secondary antibody to interferon gamma is added. Following another incubation and washing step, the substrate is added. This produces spots on the well floor, where each spot represents the footprint of one T cell that responded to the TB antigens. One spot represents one activated T cell. These spots are enumerated to provide the assay result. The T spot methodology provides a reliable means of identifying TB infection in just 24 hours. T spot TB has unrivaled sensitivity. 
This sensitivity arises from the ability of the test to identify a single activated T cell. The presence of as few as six of these cells can give a positive result. The assay only detects interferon gamma produced by T cells in response to RD1 specific peptides, so the test is also very specific. Many tests for LTBI do not perform well in immunosuppressed subjects. The T-spot assay is not affected by immunosuppression since the number of PBMCs used in each sample is always the same. This increases sensitivity and reduces the number of indeterminate results, making it the test of choice for all patients.